Our next problem is uh, quite a standard problem. Let's name it as the chain problem. In this problem, we have a chain of length L and mass M, which is positioned vertically like that. And uh, the length is L, mass is M. Initially, it is at rest. Then released from the top. Uh, so the chain will start to move downwards due to the gravitational force. The question is, what is going to be the total force acting on the chain after the chain goes down by an amount of x? So at a later time, here is the table. And the chain falls down freely, such that this distance is marked as x. And the chain is here, which is moving downwards. And some uh, portion of the chain, some segment of the chain is on the floor. And uh, the total uh, amount of chain, let's call it, uh, on the desk is x. Okay. x is now here. Here is the top of the chain, top of the chain. So the question is, find the total force by the table on the chain when it uh, moves by x downwards. Now, before we start solve the problem, let us discuss what's going to happen to the links of the chain. The, each link of the chain will f uh, feel only the gravitational force and nothing else. This is uh, not a rigid body. Uh, let us assume that the links are not connected to each other. Then each link will feel the gravitational uh, force that is going to extend downwards with the same acceleration yield. So at, within the same amount of time, each link will travel with the uh, uh, same amount of distance in the vertical direction. Then um, there are, well, the force acting on the chain can be divided into two pieces. One of the pieces is going to uh, stop the link of the chain when it hits the table. The other is going to be the uh, total force acting on the chain links on the table. So but, uh, in order to find the uh, force uh, to stop the uh, chain link, let me mark a chain here, which is going to be traveled by an amount of x, and it will hit the table at that instant. And the question is, what is the velocity of that uh, link, uh, which is easy to find? So since the only for a force acting on the chain is the gravitational force and nothing else, we can find the velocity of the link only using the conservation of energy. So uh, delta E is going to be equal to the total mechanical energy. The change in the mechanical energy is going to be zero, um, which is kinetic, uh, ki initial kinetic energy plus the potential energy due to gravity uh, initial is going to be equal to kinetic energy final plus potential energy due to gravity final. Initially, it is at rest. Let me take my reference point to be zero here. Then the final potential energy is going to be also zero. So the initial potential energy, which is well, if that distance is x, then, uh, then this distance is going to be also the, x, uh, the same amount which is x. Then the potential energy, initial potential energy is going to be mg times height, which is x, is going to be equal to the final uh, kinetic energy, which is going to be 1 over 2 mv square. v is going to be found as a function of x. So it is independent of m. Then v of x k 
can be written as 2gx. So the link hits the table with that uh, speed, and the um, which is squared, squared with that speed, uh, and due to the force acting on the link by the table, it's going to be stopped. Then the momentum, uh, then, then there's going to be some change in momentum, and that change in momentum is going to be provided by the table, which is the impulse. So the change in momentum uh, is going to be impulse, uh, or J, depending on which notation that we use, impulse uh, by the table, which is going to be uh, well, change in momentum, final momentum minus initial momentum. Well, uh, let, me, uh, let us uh, discuss the magnitudes alone. So it's going to be uh, Vx times the mass of the link. Uh, well, mass of the link, I can express this as delta m delta m, a small uh, portion of the uh, total mass, is going to be equal to the average force acting, acting on the chain uh, link by the table multiplied by the uh, a small amount of time, delta t. So um, let me convert this as, uh, write this as differential equation, dm, which is going to be f by the table. Uh, to stop the chain, dt. And dm is m divided by L times dx, or delta m is equal to m divided by L delta x. It is directly proportional to the uh, length of the uh, link. So um, let me plug in this quantity into here. Then v times m divided by L dx is going to be equal to F dt. So from this equation, F can be written as uh, V m divided by L um, times dx dt, and which is the uh, speed V. So F is equal to m L times V square. And we found the uh, velocity as a function of the, the displacement. In that case, that F to stop the link is going to be equal to um, ML times 2GX. 2GX. Let me check everything. So let me rewrite this as stuff is going to be 2 mg divided by L times x. So that is the amount of force acting on the link in order to stop it uh, when it hits the table. And we also need to uh, take into account the uh, chain links on the table already, which is going to be, so let me raise that portion. So F acting on the chain links at rest is simply going to be the weight of the uh, pieces there, which is going to be M uh, at rest times G, which is uh, M divided by L proportional to the length of the segment times G. So it's going to be MGX divided by L, so F total is going to be F to stop the link plus F the rest of the segment uh, at rest. So when we add them together, it's going to be 3MX, uh, MGX, divided by L. Is the dimension correct? Uh, MG is the weight. Okay, so weight has the dimension of the force, and length divided by length is dimensional, so the unit is correct. And it is proportional to x, when x is equal to zero, 
which is the initial uh, case, we expect that there is going to be no force acting on the uh, chain because they are holding it to start with. Okay, so that's the answer. Let us also discuss the uh, force as a function of time. What's going to be the behavior of the force? Uh, let me use this space. It's uh, quite uh, relatively easy to uh, explain. This is time. This is the force acting on the chain links as a function of time. Uh, the f when the first chain link hits the uh, ground, it's going, there's going to be a small amount of force acting on the chain. As the x progresses, the, since the velocity is going to increase, uh, as, we ha as we have found, uh, the next chain is going to hit harder, so it's going to be harder to stop, and it's going to be even harder to stop, and it will something like that. Okay? On the average, of course, it's going to be smooth. Uh, in order to draw this, we need to represent x as a function of time. N note that the uh, behavior of the, uh, the velocity of the chain links uh, is uh, experiencing a constant acceleration. x precisely is equal to 1 over 2 the acceleration times t squared. Since the initial velocity is 0 and initial position is 0, uh, then it's simple to uh, represent x as a function of time. Then that's going to be equal to simply 3m uh, g square divided by 2l times t square. So as expected, we have an increasing uh, force as a function of time. The rate of the uh, force is also increasing. It's a quadratic relation. So this is proportional to t square just as an extra information. Okay, so that's the answer.